As promised, I have the lovely, uh, I'm trying to think how should I introduce this young lady. Lovely, uh, talented, very smart, um, connected, dot connector, make things happen, author, <laughs> uh, philanthropist. Um, can I stop there? <laughs> you can stop there, quick. You can stop there. I am very happy to be here with you today. Hey, Simone Sanders officially on the show. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here in the home, in the Zoom life. Hopefully, we're going to beat COVID so we can get back into the studio. Please, please. Well, I'm not in a rush, but, but I am in a rush, if that makes sense. <laughs> now, anybody who might not know exactly who you are, can you just uh, introduce yourself to the world listening right now and tell them exactly what you do for a living? Yes, my name is Sloan Sanders. I am a strategist, a democratic strategist. I am a habitual campaign staffer. Mm -hmm. And most recently, I served as a senior advisor to the Biden-Harris campaign. And on January 20th, I will have the opportunity to serve in the Biden-Harris administration as the senior advisor and chief spokesperson for the vice president. We're all giving you a virtual round of applause, virtual round of applause right now. <clears throat> now, exactly how did you hook up with the Biden-Harris campaign? How'd that happen? Walk me through it. You know, I had, I, as I said, I'm a habitual campaign staffer. And I will tell you, in 2019 or 2018, actually, when I decided I wanted to go back out on the campaign trail, mm -hmm. I didn't know who exactly I was going to work for. In 2016, I worked for Senator um, Bernie Sanders on his first presidential run. I and so I, I, and he was running again. Mm -hmm. And then, as you know, fast forward early 2019, there were like 25 people running for president. <laughs> Facts. And I talked to a few of them and a friend of mine kept saying, oh, what about Joe Biden? And I'm like, mm, I'm sure Joe Biden is a very nice man, but I do not know him. And I'm sure the former vice president of the United States of America has a lot of people uh, in line to work for him. I don't think Facts. he's at a loss for staffers. <laughs> But long story short, a mentor of mine um, said, no, they want to talk to you. I go and I have a meeting. And then I end up having uh, a meeting with uh, the president-elect, then former Vice President Joe Biden. Yes. And we sit down. Meeting was only supposed to be 30 minutes. I stayed <laughs> with the president-elect for about two hours. Dr. Biden came, uh, our incoming first lady, our first <clears throat> lady-elect. And it was like I'd known them for years. Right. And they didn't know it at the time, but I was sold by the time I left their house. And I joined the campaign from the beginning. And I have been along for the crazy ride of the last almost two years. Yes. And very much so looking forward to this next chapter. Man, crazy ride is an understatement. Once again, we're just tuning into the Quicksilver show. We're talking to Simone Sanders. Uh, now, of course, inauguration's right around the corner. January 20th, we've all been waiting for this day. Um, Let's start here first. What can we expect? Because um, I've been telling a lot of my listeners, of course, I know a lot of my listeners are not just in D.C. They're worldwide mm -hmm. listeners as well. And I know, um, you know, the mayor's been telling us, you know, don't come to D.C. If you don't have to come, be remotely. Um, what, what can we expect for people who are in D.C. that's going to happen Wednesday? So Wednesday, we I want people in D.C., people in Maryland and Virginia, people all across this country, you can experience the inauguration right along with us at home. <laughs> Even uh -huh. if you are here in the district, what all wards stay home. You know, uh -huh. we um, when we had our convention uh, this summer, we had a convention across America, and yeah. we it was a really great produced program, and folks experienced that convention at home. And we have put together over the course of this entire week a an amazing produced. Uh, evening, like yesterday, uh, yesterday we had an evening event. Sunday night, there was a concert. Uh, tonight, we are having actually a COVID memorial to honor all of the lives lost uh, due to COVID-19, this virus unnecessarily. And then Wednesday, post-inauguration that evening, uh, we will be coming to you live from the Lincoln Memorial, but all across the, the country. So I am just encouraging people stay home okay Absolutely. stay home because we want people to be safe and this is a celebratory time but COVID is still very very real and we look forward to be able to celebrate together um sometime when we when we get a little farther down the road and getting this pandemic under control but for now I want people to buckle the bucks to settle in, you know, gather the family around. The networks will be taking us live. I want you to watch 
Wednesday morning when Joe Biden and Kamala Harris raise their hands and take that oath of office. It is going to be historic. It's going to be monumental. And I tell you, the inauguration is still happening outside. So I know there were lots of questions. It's yeah. happening outside. And I know I can speak for the president-elect and vice president-elect when I say they are excited and very much so looking forward to this. Absolutely. Now, what can we expect out of the Biden-Harris administration the first week? I, I think a lot of us have been hearing uh, the rumors, you know, as soon as Biden-Harris is in, they're going to shut the country down to get COVID under control. Uh, I mean, I've been hit, like the rumor mill has been going around crazy. Mm -hmm. um, I know certain things you might can't say yet, but what, what can we expect that the public should know the first week they're in office, this is the things they're going to focus on? Well, I want the public to know two things. First and foremost, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris do not want to shut down the country. They want to shut down the virus. Gotcha. And one of the best ways we can do that is if we wear a mask. If when you are, when the vaccine, yes, mask up, y'all. When the vaccine becomes available to you, take the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Both the president-elect and the vice president-elect have taken the vaccine. The president-elect has taken his two shots, and the vice president-elect will take her second shot uh, in about a week or so. Gotcha. Take the vaccine in the first immediate days of the administration. The second thing you can look forward to is that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are getting directly to work. I talked about the program in the evening and the inauguration in the morning, but in between that, they're going to work. They're mm -hmm. going to work in the West Wing. They're going to work in the White House. They are going to get to work with the American people. The president-elect will be signing a number of executive orders uh, to kind of to roll back a number of the atrocious uh, Trump administration policies. Mm -hmm. And he's going to keep the promises that he and the vice president-elect made on the campaign trail. So there's a lot of work to do. Uh, there is no sleep for the weary, for these mm -hmm. incoming White House staffers. But go. I want folks to know that we have a plan. And I know that's, uh, that's different <laughs> than what we have experienced over the last couple of years, but there's a plan. And we have competent, capable, and the best people that we have hired to execute that plan. But it's going to take all of us working together and every single person across this country doing their part. Mask up, y'all. Mask up. So I'm 110 percent with you. My message every day on the radio is continue to wear your mask daily, even if we're tired of it, still wear your mask. Um, but however, I'm not playing devil's advocate just with the with the vaccine right now. I don't need one of us are personal doctors, but just for people who are like kind of on the fence of, about taking the vaccine, they're saying it's too fast. I mean, it hasn't been proven yet. You know, we will listen to the Dr. Fauci and everybody else. And they're saying, even when you take the vaccine, you still have to wear your mask. Even when you take the vaccine, you potentially still can spread and contract COVID-19. So for some of my listeners, they're like, quick, if that's the case, why should I get the vaccine? Look, quick, for everybody that's listening right now, the reason to get the vaccine is that we, we look, vaccines don't save lives. Let me be very clear. Yes. Vaccines are not the thing that save lives. Vaccinations do. So we cannot save lives. We will continue to add to the unnecessary death toll in this country. We, we will not get our kids back in school. Our teachers won't get back to work. Sure. DJ Quicksilver won't get back to the studio at the radio station <laughs> if we don't take the, vaccine, the vaccine. We have to get vaccinations. And so we, our administration, um, the Biden Harris administration will have a, a robust, a robust plan. And we gotcha. are targeting 100 million shots in 100 days. Gotcha. And I know folks out there are skeptical of, of vaccines and vaccinations, especially people of color. And I mean, they have right, they, they are well within their rights, given the history mm -hmm. of vaccines and vaccinations in this country. Tuskegee Airmen, like we, we can go down the list. <laughs> but that's why it is so, so, so important that we understand the facts. And the facts are that it was a black woman was instrumental in developing the vaccines for COVID-19. The one of the first people to get the vaccine in New York State was a black woman. Kamala Harris has taken the vaccine. <laughs> when Joe Biden got his vaccination, it was a black doctor who gave him his vaccination. So mm -hmm. I think we all have to step up and do our part here. It is safe. It is, it is it is safe. It is relatively painless. Okay, I haven't gotten the vaccine yet, but I've heard about it. Okay? Well, Do you have the vaccine? I, I don't have it yet, neither. I don't have the vaccine, but I have heard right. about it. Once again, if you're just tuning in to the Quicksilver Show, we're talking to the lovely Simone Sanders. Make sure I say that correctly. Um, who was directly working with the Biden-Harris. Um, used to be um, campaign, but now we can say 
the, the transition. The transition on the way to the administration. There you go. <laughs> now, um, uh, kind of the same question I asked before we got cut off. Um, what can people expect out of the first, I'm going to say the first year to really get the country back on track? As we know, these have been a very brutal last four years. Um, and right now, the country is in shambles. I mean, that's the best word I can think of right now. Uh, what can they expect to be done the first year to kind of get us back on track? I know it's not going to happen in a year, but what's the expectations from the Biden Harris administration? Look, we believe we have to get to work immediately because the challenges that our country is facing, they cannot wait. And so we have put together over the course of this transition um, teams who are ready on day one from our uh, secretary designates on down to our senior White House staff, all the way down to the folks who are already in place in agencies. And so on day one, the president elect will sign a number of executive orders. We have already put together an immigration plan that we're sending to the, to the United States Congress on day one. We put together a plan to uh, a rescue plan, what we're calling our American rescue plan. And this is really a plan to give people the relief that they need right now. We all um, remember the, the back and forth in Congress in December over stimulus checks, checks that people needed in this country. Right now, there are folks standing in food lines quick who would have never thought they would be in a food line. There are people who haven't paid their rent in months, people who are behind on their mortgage. There are people who have lost their homes. People need relief right now. And that is what the American Rescue Plan will provide. But also, we need a recovery. As you talked about, you know, we've been through some things. And so in a couple of weeks, the president, well, at that point, will be the then president and vice president, will release their plan for an American recovery. But it's not, I mean, obviously, we know that COVID is, I mean, this pandemic is something we are all living through. We are all experiencing it. It seems like that this is the this is the thing that everyone is talking about. But other things are, are happening right in the midst of this pandemic. We have a crisis of racial injustice. You know, there are a lot of commitments and promises that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris made on the campaign trail. They are going to keep to those commitments and to those promises when it relate as it comes to addressing this this crisis of racial injustice. There's a climate crisis. There's a lot of work to be done. We've got a hundred days plan. I talked about the 100 million vaccines in a, vaccinations in a hundred days. It's a tall order. I'm tired just thinking about it, but it's work that is necessary and that we believe we can get done, but we're gonna have to come together and it's gonna be an all hands on deck, whole of government approach. Absolutely. Once again, we're just tuning into this show, we're talking to Simone Sanders. Now, of course, we're um, coming off of a second impeachment. Um, that guy, and I call him that guy, and sometimes I get in trouble for on the radio, but I don't care. Uh, but that guy, 45, was, was currently on his way out of the White House, and we're all very excited about that. Um, for a second impeachment, if you can answer this question, do we think he's going to actually be convicted? Because a lot of times my listeners, when they hear the word impeachment, like the first time, it's like Trump's been impeached, okay, it's over. And I, I tried to explain to them, it's like a charge and a conviction, um, which we see the first time the conviction that we needed did not happen. Do you think we will get that conviction this time once uh, Trump's second impeachment is gone to trial? Or will it go to trial? So, quick, first and foremost, um, the House, uh, they, they, they took up the articles of impeachment. They chose to impeach the president. And now it sits with the Senate. And the Senate is constitutionally bound to take up the case that you that you just laid out to take up that case and hear the arguments and the jurors aka the, the members of the united states senate will make their determination i don't know um the how impeachment will turn out in the united states senate but i will tell you this that congress has a job to do and they are going to do their job and joe biden and kamala harris have a job to do and they're absolutely going to do theirs and their job the, the president-elect and the vice president-elect it, they are squarely focused on getting a stimulus bill, getting a rescue plan through Congress. And they have, we, we have to get COVID under control. And so that's what we will be focused on. And let me tell you, I think that these senators and the members of Congress, they can walk and chew gum at the same time. And so while they are handling their business, we also believe that they will handle the business of the American people. Absolutely. Now, uh, like yourself and um, Kamala Harris, um, Biden has a lot of African Americans on, on, on his team. Uh, do you think that's, um, and, and not just 
African Americans, a lot of women, which I love. Like I love the fact that I'm talking to Simone Sanders, who's one of the the, the, the big dogs on the campaign. Uh, we have Kamala Harris, who's you know, if if Dominique D was on there, she'd be excited because she's an AKA like her as well. <laughs> But for people who are looking, uh, a lot of times when the, the president and vice president are in the White House, uh, we always say the black vote counts, black vote counts. And then sometimes we feel like the black vote counted when the race was, and now we don't reap any benefits of this. Uh, do we, do, what's the immediate, or if there is an immediate, is there any difference in this administration that's really going to be that the black vote feels like we weren't just used to get people in office, and now nothing we need is getting handled? Uh, Joe Biden has a saying, and his he often says, you know, show me your budget, and that will show me your priorities. And the vice president, like, they got a lot of sayings, okay? So the vice president, like Kamala Harris, she often says um, that if we take care of working people, if we take care of black people, if we take care of brown people, if our plans speak directly to indigenous folks, uh, people of color in this country, if we take, if we, are, if we are looking at policies through the lens of seeing everyone, regardless of, you know, if they are Democrats or Republicans, but if we, if we really look at our policies through those lenses and that is how we are approaching government, we're gonna do a good job. And so I say all that to say that, yes, the thoughts, the the wants, <laughs> the desires of Black people, but also of Latino folks, of Asian American Pacific Islander folks, of people of color across the board, but also some people who are not of color are of importance to this administration. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, they ran as Democrats, mm -hmm. absolutely, but they are going to govern as Americans. And if we if if we <laughs> we have to do the work. And the work requires that we're listening to the people and that we keep our promises and our commitments. And the commitments that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris made on the campaign trail about racial equity, about economic equity, those are things that they're absolutely going to deliver on. I mean, there's pieces of it in, their legisla in the legislative package that we previewed last week in the American Rescue Plan. Our whole of government approach absolutely applies to racial equity. Um, but I will tell you that it is the voters out there, the people, the American people, it is your job to hold us accountable. Absolutely. And so I hope that just as you all are hoping that we haven't forgotten about you when we go into the administration, y'all can't forget that you have a job to do as well. That means people need to show up, uh, show up, not just wait until the midterm elections or the next presidential campaign, but show up. There, you, we got to pay attention. There will be a State of the Union soon, where uh, soon into the administration, where the president and the vice, where the president will lay out his update to Congress and his plan. You know, we the, uh, the vice president and the president will be out and about over the next couple of days, selling their legislative package. There will be opportunities for you to pick up the phone and call your senators and your members of Congress to tell them what you want. Just as vocal as folks were during the campaign, they need to be vocal now because we are listening, we hear you. And while we're not gonna fix it all in six months or a year, uh, maybe not even four years, we can make strides, but we're gonna have to do it together. So y'all hold us accountable and we're gonna do our part. And I think that's what a lot of us, and you've been using the word accountable a lot, which I love, mm -hmm. um, because I always tell my listeners, uh, we can't just vote for the president and vice president, uh, but don't vote for the local officials. We can't just vote for the president and vice president, uh, but don't really study the policies that we want. And I always say, when you're voting for a president or anybody, even if you're voting for a mayor, uh, make sure you do your research. A lot of us, do your research. when I say us, a lot of us, especially a lot of young millennials, I'm just being honestly and candid, you know, they, they were... I seen the argument, and I'm sure you guys seen on social media, like, you know, voting for the Biden Harris is like voting for the lesser of two evils. I, I don't like the Trump administration, but I don't love the Biden Harris. Um, what, what do we say to somebody who still has that mentality, even with them winning the election that we're all very happy about? Uh, but you have some people that are still on the fence, like, uh, do I still, uh, is Biden Harris really the one? I don't know. I just, I just don't want Trump anymore. Look, to those folks, I say, you have watch us. This is what Joe Biden say. Watch me, watch me, watch what I do. Gotcha. And 
if there is any, if, if you're looking for any indication of how a Biden-Harris administration will conduct itself, look no further than how it has conducted itself during the transition. You know, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have put competent, capable, experienced, uh, qualified people at the helm of these agencies. They have hired competent, capable, experienced, qualified people with diverse backgrounds and socioeconomic status and various vantage points at the highest levels of the United States government, in the White House, on their staff. He has kept his promise about ensuring that this country looks like that, that, that the country that that is in their depth and breadth and diversity, that it is represented in the White House, that it is represented in the administration. So watch us is what Joe Biden would say if he were sitting, sitting here. I, I love it. And I love your swag. I, I hate to use the word swag. I feel like that's outdated now. Uh, but you have like this aura about you that's infectious. And it's like a, a energy. I always say like I, I'm big on energy and I always say the energy doesn't align. And you just have this amazing energy. And I'm really glad I'm talking to you. Once again, we just thank you. Show, thank you. To Simone Sanders. She's absolutely amazing. Now, if any any young black girls that are watching and they're trying to figure out you know, I, I don't want to be put in a box. I want to I want to be the next Simone Sanders. I want to be the next um, Kamala Harris. Um, but I don't see that in my future because my circumstances just doesn't look like I have the potential to even get there because of where I am in life right now. What would Simone say? I would say, you know, the 100 Black men, they have a motto. 100 Black men is an organization. They have a motto that says what they see is what they'll be. And I think that for so many young girls across this country and boys, but young women, especially women of color, they have, they now have a visual representation of what it looks like, what the possibility of America is in Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. The second most powerful person in the world, okay? Because Joe Biden is gonna be the most powerful person in the world when he's elected president. The second most powerful person in the world is a black woman, a woman of color, a daughter of immigrants. A, a daughter of California. So don't tell me that anything is impossible. And she worked very hard to get there. So what I would say to any young black girl that's listening or that is seeing this on the internet, mm -hmm. that you have to make your plan. And I like to actually call it an outline. Okay. You've got dreams and goals. I always tell people, put it in the outline. Ever since I was a, I was, I was a young girl, I had my phone mm -hmm. Well, back in the day, y'all know quick, we didn't have them like this. We had the little flip joints. Okay. We had books we were writing in. But now I have, I have my goals in my phone. I keep it in a note section in my phone and my note section of my goals is my outline. And that is what keeps me focused and anchored. And when I am when when I first moved to Washington DC and I was trying to make decisions about what it is I wanted to do and oh and I I came here to do this and I'm not doing that and maybe this isn't for me. I always went back to my outline. Mm -hmm. And I think that there, yes, adversity is real. Struggles are real. As Donna Brazil once told me, uh, racism, sexism, ageism is not going away tomorrow. We have to stand up to it. We need to call it out when we see it. We need to work to combat it every single day, but we also have to figure out how to navigate through it. And I promise you, if you figure out how to navigate through it while also holding the system accountable, you are going to be just all right. Come on now, give me a virtual round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this girl is the real deal, as I would love to say. Um, last question, that was kind of a two-part question. We can wrap it up after this. Um, if you could say something right now to those Trump supporters or or to those, I, I'm gonna say what it is, those domestic terrorists um, who, who were at the Capitol and, and did the things they did, who I always, you know, that's a whole other conversation why they weren't arrested on the spot. But if you could say something to them who still, uh, plan to be these Trump supporters and not do the right thing, and they're listening right now. What would you say to these these terrorists, these these domestic terrorists, what they are? Well, I don't know if I have anything to say to the folks who attacked our democracy on January 6th, but I will say this. Mm -hmm. On January 6th, our, our democracy was, in fact, attacked. Yes. And it was a harrowing day. It was despicable. A mob, a riotous mob attacked the United States Capitol, Confederate a flag for the first time ever in our history, a Confederate flag was in the United States Capitol. But after that harrowing day, what happened at the end of that day, I think is mo what's most important is that the people that we elected in this country, both Democrats and Republicans came back to work to do their jobs. They ensured that democracy would move 
forward. That riotous mob, those people that attacked our democracy couldn't stop it, although they sure did try. Yes. And on January 20th, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, they are going to be inaugurated. Joe Biden is going to be the 46th president of the United States of America. Kamala Harris is going to be the first black woman, first woman vice president of the United States of America. And I am looking forward to that. Simone Sands, you couldn't have said it any better. And in closing, because I know for a fact him and his team, they're listening and watching because they listen and watch the show daily. Any last words for Trump before we get out the house? <laughs> Anything you want to say, it doesn't matter if you can. We'll see you. <laughs> Keep it classy. Thank you so much. Um, I really, really appreciate you uh, uh, tuning into the show. You have a home here. If you ever need me or my show or Diva or our platform for anything, I'm always a phone call, a text away. Um, and and I, I, I can't uh, get you off of here without saying thank you so much for supporting my daughter. Oh, Ashton. her hoodie is so amazing. For folks who don't know, Quint's daughter has these hoodies. I got a gray one. Uh, my boyfriend, my partner, he got one for me. And it is a picture, a silhouette of uh, the vice president elect Kamala Harris, yeah. and then Ruby Bridges yeah. in the background. And it is, it was so amazing. I wore it the other day. Thank so you. shout out to Ashton. Ashton is your daughter's name, right? Ashton, yeah. Shout out to Ashton. Uh, we love a young entrepreneur. Yeah. Fashion Ashton is her is her website and that's her company. And when, I, when, I, when she saw the picture, she was so excited. She said, Daddy, look, I, my, my sweatshirt is famous. I said, that's it, but keep going. But thank you so much, man. And any last words for all your supporters? I mean, people have been supporting you for years. I remember when I first um, seen you on our Urban One Honors. Um, so I've been following your journey for quite some time right now. And I'm really proud of all that you've done, um, not you. just with the Biden-Harris administration, but with your personal life and your personal business as well. Um, so thank for all you. of your supporters that's been supporting Simone Sanders since day one, any last words for them? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There are people that have been riding with me since 2015, and I appreciate you all. And the work does not stop. So uh, I know people are like, well, when are you coming back on TV? I am working right now, y'all. I'm working. I'm working. But I so appreciate the love. And I will tell you to the folks here in D.C., D.C. is my second home. I'm a Nebraska girl all day. Nice. But D.C. is absolutely home and i just so appreciate the love that y'all showed me every every single time i see anybody out there so thank you thank you so much and i look guys y'all gonna have to continue to hold us all accountable myself included and i will see y'all on the other side of this pandemic because we go. are gonna get there wear your mask everybody wear your damn mask wear your mask <laughs> all right thank you so much and you have a blessed night thank you you too we'll talk soon absolutely thank you